We are continuing our study of Revelation. The seventh seal was opened, and now we hear the seven trumpets about to sound. The book of Revelation is laid out in a pattern of sevens. There is definitely a mathematical pattern to the book. We have messages to seven churches, the opening of seven seals, the blowing of seven trumpets, and finally the seven vials or bowls of judgment. There are twenty-one of these in all, all these seals, trumpets, and vials, and they have been literally fulfilled in historical sequence. Now what about the trumpets? What do they signify and what is their purpose? The trumpets are blown for two purposes. Number one, to sound an alarm. Number two, to pronounce judgment upon a wicked system, city, country, or people. For example, when we go to the Old Testament, the trumpets were blown to signify the destruction of Jericho. They carried the ark on their shoulders, and the seven priests armed with ram's horns led the procession. They walked around the walls every day for seven days. On the seventh day, after they circuited the city seven times, the priest blew the ram's horn, called a shofar, and down came the walls of Jericho. Thus the trumpets signified judgment. And again we remember the story of Gideon. Gideon assembled three hundred men. He gave them big earthenware jars with a flaming lamp inside, and a ram's trumpet. They crept around a Midianite camp, and at midnight they blew the shofars, smashed the jars, and it was judgment and destruction upon the people of Midian who had come up against Israel. Let us read from the prophet Ezekiel. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people. The trumpets do not just indicate judgment, they are also blown by the faithful servants of God to alarm or to wake up God's people. This is why the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians, For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? We are told that there were seven angels sent forth to sound trumpets of judgment upon the three sections of the earth, which was the territory of the old Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was divided into three parts at the approximate time of the 4th through 5th centuries. Subsequently, when we read about the earth in these verses, they are not talking about the global earth as we know it today, but they were talking about the Roman earth. For God saw all their sins, and he brought pagan Rome of the Caesars to judgment. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. The heavens here is not referring to the abode of God above. The word heavens has several different meanings in the Bible. Paul, for instance, speaks about the third heaven in 2 Corinthians. Jesus speaks in Matthew chapter 5 about the heaven and earth not passing away until all is complete. The Bible speaks of a first, second, and third heaven. The first heaven is the area around the earth, our atmosphere, or the air we breathe. The second heaven would be the area where the stars, sun, and galaxies dwell. The third heaven is the heavenly throne of Almighty God. In this opening verse, we're reading about the first heaven. It means the ruling power on earth, which was at that time the old Roman Empire. We saw the overthrow of the pagan religion in the seven seals, and Constantine ushered in Christianity. The result? There was peace for a little while. But the vision given to John said the peace would be for a very short time, about the space of half an hour. And an angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thundering, and lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. While in the law of the covenant found in the Old Testament, the high priest daily filled the censer with fire from the brazen altar of sacrifice in the court of the temple, and he carried it into the holy place. He was given a bowl or vial of specially prepared incense, which stood before the veil covering the holy of holies, where the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat was kept. While the incense penetrated the veil, the worshipping Israelites were praying outside. So this reveals the purpose of the incense. It was to carry with it the prayers of the people beyond the otherwise impassable veil into God's presence and thus obtain His merciful blessings. We see from this explanation that our prayers under the Old Testament, before Jesus, could not reach under God except through mediation of a high priest who burnt the incense from the fire of the altar. In the New Covenant, our angelic high priest in Revelation 8 represents Jesus Christ Himself the one and only mediator between God and man. Thus we see the veil in the temple was split in two, from top to bottom, when Jesus died on the cross. 
We no longer need an earthly mediator, for Jesus Christ himself presents our prayers to the Father. But then we see the angel take the censer, filled it with fire, and cast it back to earth. This was a cause and effect judgment. Why? Although we witnessed the fall of paganism in Rome, the new so-called Christian Roman Empire went astray from revealed truths. Constantine only nominally became Christian, as did many of the people of the Roman Empire. They didn't have a true renewing of heart and mind. Instead, they became Christian in name because it was popular. It was the trendy thing to do. The early Church of Rome became apostate because it attributed its imperial power to the recent martyrs of pagan Rome whose bones, relics, pictures, images, and tombs began to be regarded as holy and as a form of mediation with God. This, in turn, led to all kinds of idolatries and angel worship. In the days of the Law Covenant, there were two historic examples of God's judgment on false worshipers. In number 16, we read about 250 princes who rebelled against the priesthood of Aaron and tried to replace the true Aaronic priesthood. When the counterfeits burned the incense to the Lord, they themselves were consumed in fire and there was a great earthquake. In Leviticus 10, we read about two priests who offered incense before the Lord with strange fire. Instead of following God's word, they chose their own method and composition of praise. The result, God slew them with fire. From Old Testament types, we see why judgment of the seven trumpets were poured out on the Roman earth from the 5th century onward. First of all, the Roman Catholic priests, bishops, and popes rebelled against the high priesthood of Christ by claiming for themselves the authority to forgive sins, and they set themselves up in a priestly class above the laity. This is still being practiced by Catholicism today. Secondly, the worship of Almighty God offered by Romanism was a worship of strange fire, the many counterfeit mediators, such as saints and martyrs. We are told there was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. Now remember, this was the first heaven or earthly heaven. The peace and calm since the sixth seal was opened was only brief, for it was only twelve years since the Christian persecutions ended and religious freedom was declared that the first Roman church council was convened in Nicaea and the first damnable doctrines took root. Judgment is now coming. The trumpets are about to sound.